right then. It's, you know, it's a sick phone. I wouldn't buy it, but let's go over everything. I'll explain why, and you can make up your mind after that. So what's new with the Galaxy S24 Ultra's design? I mean, it's Samsung, so not a whole lot. Uh, if you do look, though, we've got the titanium frames. I'm sure the the chassis isn't titanium, though. We've also got a new uh, completely flat display from edge to edge, so that'll be a lot better for uh, screen protectors and cases. Uh, we've also got Corning's new Gorilla Armor Glass with this sort of, like, reflection reduction coating, which, quite frankly, actually works pretty darn good. Now, as far as I'm aware, there's four in-store colors. You've got titanium black, titanium gray, which is what I've got here, uh, titanium violet and then titanium yellow. Now, following up on that, if you wanted to purchase them online, there's three online exclusive colors. So we've got titanium blue, titanium green, and titanium orange. Now, I'm sure you all remember Samsung's past devices have been like super shiny, glossy reflective backs for the longest time. Uh, they started doing this frosted glass back. I'm in love with it. This is the way it should be. Now, as far as I'm aware, uh, there isn't anything new with the S Pen. Apparently, it sticks out the bottom like a fraction of a millimeter uh, more than last year's probably just for some easier access and i don't know if they've done something new with the ultrasonic fingerprint reader but i mean it is lightning fast and extremely reliable uh same location same size it'd be great if they made it just a little bit bigger but um yeah it's been working great really impressed now as always samsung makes phenomenal top of the line top tier displays the samsung galaxy s ultra obviously being their highest level flagship is no exception we've got a 6.8 inch qhd plus 120 hertz it's LTPO uh, refresh display, AMOLED, sports HDR, HDR10+, plus. no Dolby Vision though. Uh, brightness wise, it can get up to 2600 nits. Colors look absolutely fantastic. A lot of people have been saying that they've noticed the saturation has taken a bit of a dip. Um, I don't know if it has taken a bit of a dip, then, you know, it's been a gradual implementation to me and I haven't really noticed that a whole lot, but I will show you something here. If we go into screen mode and then we go into advanced, we're already in vivid right now. If we go into advanced, we now have a vividness slider. Um, there isn't, you know, granular control. It's like nothing sort of halfway or all the way. Um, I kind of keep it in the middle there. I do find that all the way is a bit too harsh for my eyes, but, uh, but yeah, getting back to the brightness again, 2600 nits, obviously that's going to be peak brightness. So if you're outdoors, uh, you can actually, you, we have the option to kick it into like high mode. So you've got adaptive brightness, which I like to keep off. Then you've got this extra brightness. Let me show, let me show you what happens with this. Whoa, and then the nice thing is that it gets so bloody dim that it's damn near black. So if you happen to be outdoors and you accidentally slide the dimmer all the way down to the bottom, um, you're gonna have a hell of a time trying to turn it back on. You're gonna have to cover it with your hand or something like that. Um, the stereo speakers sound really, really good. In fact, this year I might even go as far as saying the low end's been improved a little bit. Obviously with the larger body, you're gonna get some more resonance room for the acoustics in there. If you have like the S24, the standard version, it's probably not gonna sound quite as good as the Ultra. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention about the design is the squared off corners on the Ultra versus the rounded corners on the S24 and S24 Plus. Personally, I prefer the rounded corners because like most of you, I actually hold the corner of my phone on my pinky like this. I would have preferred if they had actually rounded those corners like they did on the other two phones. Now, obviously all of Samsung's new Galaxy S24 series phones is gonna come with Samsung One UI 6.1. We're also getting Android 14, but the cool thing is that Samsung has promised us seven years of not only security patches, but also major Android software updates. So that comes out to three more years of major Android OS updates and two more years of security patches than the S20. Now, I'm sure some, if not all of you, have seen all the marketing Samsung's been pushing around the new AI features in their new phones. Well, that's cool. We've got some interesting AI features, but what kind of irks me is that they're saying the AI features are going to be free until 2025, at which point they'll start charging for certain features. I'm not sure how that sits with you, but it doesn't really sit well with me. Like, are we going to be paying a subscription model in order to unlock a bunch of features on our phone? Uh, all right, so let's get into all the AI stuff, shall we? Let's go ahead and jump into settings. We're going to scroll midway down to advanced features, jump into advanced intelligence. And the first one we've got here is phone. Get real-time translations during voice calls. If you read here, it says get real-time translation during calls. Tap the call assistant button, then select live translate on the in-call screen anytime to start translating. So essentially, what you can do is speak to somebody in China, in India, in wherever the hell you want, Poland, and it'll translate for you you to them and them to you. 
Can you imagine how much easier that's going to make your life? And then there's interpreter, and it's pretty much exactly what you would expect it to be. Um, you can either type out your message or speak out your message, and then it'll then output it into whatever language you want. So you say, hello, how are you in English? And then it'll say, hello, how are you in French, for example. Samsung keyboard kind of has a neat feature too. If we jump into there, you'll notice we've got chat translation, which will do the translations like we've talked about. Lots of translation tech in this phone, okay? And then we've got style and grammar. That's something that I can and will use on a regular basis if I need to. So as long as you're using the Samsung keyboard, no other keyboard, it'll change the tone. So what you've written can sound professional, casual, or ready to post it on a tap. Uh, get suggested grammar and spelling corrections and suggested improvements and so on and so forth. That's pretty cool. It sucks it has to be the Samsung keyboard. And then finally, we arrive at the photo editor. This can do a lot of cool things. All right, let's go ahead and use this selfie as an example. We're going to click on the edit button. Then we're going to click on these two stars sort of AI button. Now, you'll notice how the picture is not really on horizon, right? This is where generative AI comes into play. So I'm going to go ahead and use the frame uh, on the picture there as my horizon. I'm going to go ahead and click generate and we'll see what it does. And there you go. As you can see, it just completely straightens everything, generatively fills in the rest. No cropping needed. Let's go ahead and look at the original and after, before, after, before, after. That's pretty impressive, dude. All right, now that we've straightened that out, maybe I want to make myself a little more pronounced. I'm going to go ahead and tap and hold on me. You'll see that it selected me. I'm going to go ahead and make myself a little bit bigger because I'm more important. There we go. That works. We're going to go ahead and generate. Here's the original and the after. Done. Or, you know, maybe I don't like my wife photo bombing my landscape photo. So what I'll go ahead and do is click on the edit button, click on the AI button, I'm gonna go ahead and tap and hold on her. It's gonna select her. Goodbye, sweetheart. You'll notice that we've got a blank spot there. Click generate and like magic, she's gone. Look at that beautiful landscape photo, much better than the original. Or maybe I want her to do a handstand instead, All right? Go ahead and flip her around, make her a little bit bigger. There we go. Hey, you're doing it, babe. There you go. She's doing a hands down. It looks absolutely terrible. The edges are horrible. Um, a lot of work needs to be done here, but you get the gist of things. Some things are possible, some things are not. And what's kind of neat of Samsung is to allow us to use any photo from any camera, any image period we want. As long as you're running it through the Samsung Gallery app itself, you can use all those features, no problem. Pretty sweet. In fact, same thing with video. You can do some pretty interesting stuff. Let me show you. All right, so I'm going to quickly show you a video that was filmed at 4K 30p, all right? And I want you to pay attention to the speed that I'm panning back and forth. So there we are at the lake that we had to wheel to through some pretty deep snow to get there. There's my wife, little cabin, panning back and forth at the lake, my dog, decent uh, exposure transitions, actually really good exposure transitions, but you know, kind of fast movement camera, right? We're gonna go ahead and pause it right there. I'm gonna go up to edit. I'm gonna click on adjust speed. I'm gonna click on one quarter. I'm gonna uh, drag a bit because we don't need to watch the whole bloody video. And I'm gonna click on save. It's gonna go ahead and process the video now. And it's processing at one quarter the speed it was originally filmed at. So essentially what we're doing is generating through AI slow motion video. You may notice some slight flickering going on in the trees, lots of detail in those trees. So my guess is that it struggles with high detail images. Look how much smoother that panning is. So anyways, yeah, uh, point being is it works, right? Is it perfect? No. Is there some situations that are gonna be better for it than others? Absolutely. But this is the first generation of this kind of software on a phone, so. I think that's pretty damn good, to be completely honest. All right, it's time to talk about performance. So all Galaxy S24 Ultras come with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, uh, 12 gigs of RAM, along with 256, 512, or one terabytes worth of storage. Now, because of that new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, Samsung had to throw in a new cooling vapor chamber almost two times the size of the S23 Ultra. You're probably gonna be seeing the exact same results as last year. It's just slightly better performance. Performance. But if you're looking at doing things like photo editing, video editing, uh, gaming, all of the above, Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is the latest and greatest on the market today. Um, you're not going to find anything better. So whatever phone you've experienced in the past that has decent performance, this will be better. You shouldn't have any complaints. Okay? Okay. Battery life, 5,000 milliamp hours. All right. 
I was really hoping for like 5,500 this year. Uh, 5,000 milliamp hour batteries for a phone like this is actually pretty standard. And depending on use, you're gonna get anywhere from five and a half to seven and a half hours. Um, I can usually get seven, seven hours if I baby it. So that usually looks like about the most part of two days for me. The majority of the time on average, I'm getting about six hours, maybe six and a half hours. And that's about a day and a half ish of battery life. And that's right at around like five, 10% left. Not bad, but not great. We do, however, get 45 watt wired charging and 15 watt wireless charging. Yeah, 45 watt charging is a lot slower than say 70 watt charging, super VOOC and all that. Uh, however, it's a lot safer and the longevity of your battery is gonna last a lot longer. Now the problem is the cable that's included with the phone is only capable of reaching a maximum of three amps output. So in order to achieve the full 45 watts that the Ultra is capable of accepting, you're gonna need to go over and above three amps, which is what the included cable is only capable of doing. So for example, if you've got a charger that's capable of 45 watts, it doesn't matter because the included cable doesn't support it. That being said, if you did have a 45 watt charger as well as a charging cable that's capable of outputting as much as you need, um, you're looking at about an hour and 20 minutes from zero to 100% for charging this guy up. Uh, so yeah, acceptable battery life could be better. All right, now let's get into what you all really care about the cameras. So we've got a 200 megapixel wide angle, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 10 megapixel three times telephoto and a 50 megapixel five times telephoto. Now this year's 50 megapixel five time telephoto actually replaces last year's 10 megapixel 10 times telephoto. And the reason they did that is because at five times and 50 megapixels, you're getting much better five times telephoto pictures, but also extremely high quality 10 times telephoto photos telephoto photos. Huh. And images look fantastic all throughout the zoom ranges, right up until we get just past 10x. Then all the detail starts to fall apart as we usually expect, right? Now, apparently a lot of people have been pointing out that they think the saturation has been lowered in the S24 Ultra photos compared to the S23 Ultra. Uh, maybe it's super, super gradual, but personally they look just as vibrant to me as they always have. Uh, I did notice that the main 200 megapixel camera can overexpose whites and highlights if the main subject isn't in fact being picked up as the main subject by the viewfinder. And I noticed it actually does the same thing in video as well. But yeah, blue skies are really blue. Green trees are nice and vibrant. Images look really sharp and detailed. I mean, what else is there to say? Galaxy phones just take some of the best looking pictures out there. They just look stunning. Now, like I mentioned earlier, when I was converting that regular video to slow motion, um, exposure transitions on this phone are phenomenal. Uh, one thing I was impressed with is uh, optical image stabilization for video works really, really, really well. There is the option for super steady though. Super steady, it almost looks like you're on like a gimbal or something, or it's locked off on a tripod. It's really, really steady. The problem is uh, it completely over processes video and makes it look like complete trash. So the 12 megapixel selfie cam, still produces really nice looking images. It actually handles exposure really, really well, colors really well, uh, detail, and most importantly, of course, uh, color tones. The problem is it sucks in low light, as you can see here. So then Jared, if it's such a great phone, why did you say at the beginning of the video, you wouldn't buy one? Because the S24 Plus exists. The Ultra only has 100 milliamp hour bigger battery. It has a 200 megapixel camera as opposed to the Plus's uh, 50, 12, and 10 megapixels. The display is only like 0.1 of an inch larger but it's $300 more than the Plus. Not only that, you don't have to screw around with an S Pen that almost nobody uses. Let's be completely honest with ourselves here. And the corners are rounded on the Plus, which is a nice little touch. Anyways, I think for like 90% of people out there, the Plus, if you're looking for a big phone, is the way to go. Save yourself 300 bucks, get the S24 Plus, call it a day. Anyways, I think that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.